These days, there are some great mountain bikes on the market for around the 500 pound mark. But at this level, it's absolutely vital you're realistic about the intended use of the bike. At the top end of this price bracket, you can find new bikes capable of riding moderate off-road terrain all year round. But there are pitfalls you need to look out for and avoid. If you're buying a bike solely to get to work or cruise down canal paths, you might be better off with a hybrid as they're often lighter and fitted with road-friendly tires and wheels that will offer lower rolling resistance. But if you're sure you want a mountain bike, keep watching. In short, buy your bike from a bike shop. Even if you have a tiny budget, the last thing you want to do is grab a bargain mountain bike during your weekly supermarket shop. Look for evidence of an on-site mechanic, as bikes are generally shipped in pieces and assembled in store. It should go without saying that you want your bike to have been built by someone who knows what they're doing. Online stores offer tempting prices, but at this price point, we'd advise taking advantage of the expertise offered by a bricks and mortar experience, especially if you're a newcomer to the sport. Independent shops can offer a more personal experience and the chance to build a relationship lasting for years to come. But big chains have better buying power and are able to discount more aggressively and usually offer a wider choice of brands. Don't be afraid to spend some time shopping around a couple of each type of store before deciding on which of these factors is most important to you. Suspension is primarily designed to add traction on rough terrain but comfort is a welcome side effect. Suspension forks can often be a weak link in less expensive bikes. So if you want to spend significantly less than 500 pounds, you may be better off with a lightweight, rigid fork rather than a poor performing suspension option. This is doubly true if most of your riding will be on roads or other hard surfaces. If you are buying a bike with suspension, then look for branded forks from the likes of RockShox and SR Suntour. Front suspension bikes with rigid back ends also known as hardtails, at the top end of this price bracket will often feature lockout controls, which effectively switch off the suspension. This is great for increasing pedal efficiency on smooth surfaces and while climbing. One more factor to consider is how much suspension you need. You'll find hardtails with anything from 80 to 140 millimeters of travel, and more is not necessarily better. In the simplest terms, the more travel the bike has, the more likely it is to be optimized for descending and rough terrain, rather than climbing and mellower trails. We definitely advise against bikes with rear suspension if you're spending 500 pounds or less. It'll make the bike far heavier than it needs to be and probably won't perform very well, if at all. If you have your heart set on full suspension and can't spend more than 500 pounds, then you'd be better off looking for a used bike. Just make sure it's trail worthy before handing over the cash. Take a knowledgeable friend if you're in any doubt. All higher end mountain bikes use hydraulic disc brakes, but below 500 pounds, you'll find plenty with cable pull disc brakes or even rim brakes. If you want to ride in muddy winter conditions, hydraulic disc brakes are by far your best option and are worth paying extra for. Cable pull disc brakes will stop you just fine but will need more frequent maintenance and won't stand up to as much abuse on the trails. Rim brakes are a bit old school and don't perform anything like as well as disc brakes, especially in the wet. If you're going to ride off-road and in winter conditions, then we definitely advise you to steer clear. Gears help pedal the bike up and downhill, as well as everything in between. The number of gears is less important than the range of ratios available and, to an extent, you can adjust those later by replacing the cassette or chain rings. Quality is a much bigger consideration. Branded and named shifters and derailers from Shimano and SRAM are generally better built than unbranded components, and spares will be much easier to find. Most bikes at any price range will come with some pretty sketchy pedals. Heavy, slippery, and prone to braking. If you're serious about going off-road, then these pedals should in most cases be removed from the bike at the earliest opportunity. In fact, we suggest buying a new set at the same time as your bike. And don't be afraid to ask for them to be thrown in or discounted. It's really important to get a bike that's the right size for you. Otherwise, you'll be dealing with aches and pains following longer rides. The bad news is that bike manufacturers don't all build to the same standards 
and in many cases, you'll be left wondering if a medium is the same as an 18 inch. And what's an 18 inch anyway? If the bike has a numbered size, it will refer to the length of the seat tube. The problem is, the distance between where you sit and the handlebar is arguably more important, and that measurement has a fairly loose relationship with the seat tube length. Take the expert advice of shop staff on board, and don't be tempted to jump or drop a size because there's a bike on sale. Unless you have a really good understanding of bike fit, then you may want to avoid buying a bike online, or at least make sure there's an easy returns process. You may or may not have heard that there are now three different wheel sizes for mountain bikes. There's no outright best size, but they do have different characteristics. Some riders consider the bigger 29 inch or 29 er wheels to roll better. So if cross country or paved surface riding is your thing, then these should suit you better. 26 inch wheels have been dominant for years, so there's lots of spares and options available. Plus, the technology is extremely well developed. However, they're being rapidly replaced with the new 650B wheels, also known as 27.5 inch. These middle sized wheels are favored by people who are looking to ride at trail centers or just want a smaller and more agile bike. Mountain bikes generally weigh more than similarly priced road, commuter and hybrid bikes because they have been built to withstand far harsher conditions and treatment. Lighter bikes are generally more expensive, which is one of the big reasons why enthusiasts will part with thousands of pounds for a high-end ride. There's no correct weight for a bike at any given price point, but weight saving is a good reason to spend as much as you can afford. Finally, remember to trust your instincts and buy the bike that feels right for you, but only after you've done plenty of window shopping. Give us a shout in the comments section below if you've got any questions. If not, just go ahead and click subscribe and we'll see you on the trails.